waited for this night. He's waited for me. I've waited for him. Get out! Go home! Get inside! You don't believe in the boogeyman? He's here! Michael! You should. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Real Time. For the real, everyday movie fan, I am Josh Williams. And I'm Ryan Murphy. And today, we're giving you our real-time review of Halloween 2008, not the... 2018, yes. Yeah, not 2018, I'm it's sorry. It's the sequel I'm, I'm... to Halloween called Halloween. <laughs> Possibly the dumbest title in the history of cinema. Right next to Precious, based on the novel Pushed by Sapphire. Halloween's a great movie title. Halloween, just, yeah. The sequel the being sequel, called yeah. Halloween is... What are you, rank what you're referring to? Yes. No, who is, directed this and who's all in But also Halloween H2O, Halloween Water, the Halloween <laughs> series. Those are maybe the three worst titles. So the Halloween series gets two out of the top three. At any rate, um, Halloween 2018 is directed by uh, David Gordon Green. Um, and it stars Jamie Lee Curtis, Judy Greer, uh, Will Patton, and uh, returning uh, Nick Castle as Michael Myers, who we found out was actually only in one scene in the movie. Like, that was what they announced. Like, this whole thing was like this, oh, well, we're going back to basics. First movie that John Carpenter has been involved in since number two, and first, mm -hmm. you know, first, first since the original for this, and oh, Nick Castle, the original, uh, Michael Myers is gonna play him again, and then you find out later, like, oh yeah, we just got it for one scene. And he does the breathing. Like, yeah. whenever they ADR for the breathing, like, that's it, like, that's just the little, signature for and you gotta include jamie lee curtis's or laurie strode's granddaughter andy andy matichek matichek sort plays of breakthrough mm -hmm. you know um but who uh who was it that wrote this as yeah, well wrote it was, was it was it was david gordon green with danny mcbride that's right one danny of the guy. but danny it's very surprising to find out danny mcbride wrote, wrote a halloween movie. right there's a couple <laughs> scenes in the movie where you're like yeah he probably wrote <laughs> that scene but we'll get to those uh yeah. so well, let's start with you oh gosh what okay. did you think oh you, well, you have to pick on me first because i have of to course. be the bad guy because everyone's so hyped for this movie and i'm gonna be the i'm gonna be the mm -hmm. killjoy who's like eh, eh. that's my review uh i'm gonna give it a six out of out of ten you still gave it a positive it's score. a positive score it's, it's it's recommended it's it's i was disappointed because it's been so like like john Car it's been so hyped up and john carpenter's been like you know i never wanted to do it after the first one i had made a very simple film with the first film of just you know this killer um and stocking babysitters and once that was over it was just like there's nothing more to say and so i didn't really want to write the second one or get involved in it I kind of got roped into it but i never really felt like there was more to the story and you know after 40 years dave gordon green came to me with this great idea and i really thought that you know and so i thought well this is going to be really interesting and really cool I and mean, seeing the trailers and obviously there was stuff like you know uh laurie strode the survivor 40 years later what she like and all that sort of stuff and that's all there and true and I really enjoyed the first um, even like 40 minutes of this movie. And then it really started to drag out into another slasher film. Just like like just like all the films that Halloween inspired. Where it's this teenager getting killed. And this teenager getting killed. And then this teenager gets killed. But you gotta admit it picks back up towards the end. It does pick up back up towards the end. But it was just like... It, it, it really made me feel like this is just... this is. I mean... And also reminded me of The Force Awakens. Which is never a good thing. Uh, considering that that is the worst film of the new millennium, um, that and Last Jedi are kind of tied. Uh, but uh, you know, it just like whereas The Force Awakens was just like we're gonna have the same stuff happen to the same characters over again. The Empire's back, and more, you know, and the Jedi are gone again. So let's rebuild them again, and you know, all that sort of stuff. And here it was like, okay, the first Halloween is about this guy's in the been he committed this murder long ago, and he's been in the loony bin ever since. And then he breaks out, and he gets this mask, and he goes on this killing rampage. And so in this movie, like, well, would they put him back in the insane asylum? And now he breaks out again. And the scene where he breaks out is very reminiscent of the scene where he breaks out in the, in the first film. I mean, it's just, mm -hmm. you know, all these guys walking around in their white robes. And he gets out and takes a car. And and uh, and then and he comes back to Haddonfield. And Haddonfield's like, oh, here he is again. I mean, it's so it, it felt uh, kind of repetitive in that sense, um, which is okay. It's not like Force Awakens bad because we are dealing with... Um, you know, a character that it is sort of, I think at the end of the day, what it's really, what it's kind of the reason it exists, it's raison d'etre, if I get really fancy on you, uh, is um, 
is uh, the story of Lori Strode. Now, this she after forty years, she she kind of needs this to happen. She she kind of needs him to come back and give her some closure and give him give mm-hmm. her the opportunity to, to kill his ass. And um, but between it's it's very repetitive at first, and then it kind of picks up at the end. But between then, it's all just sort of yeah, like slasher movie. So. I didn't really see a lot of the the brilliance or any of David Gordon Green, who's such a renowned filmmaker for his indie films. Um, well, as we were talking after the film, you did admit there was a lot of great, clever things. With there were the, a lot of great, yeah. Great, there was one, there was in this one movie. scene at the near the end of the movie, and I like I like the beginning and I like the end. It's pretty much everything in between that wasn't wasn't great. But there was a scene near the end of the movie where I, and we were the only two in the theater. We saw a yeah, twelve thirty matinee in the middle of rural Missouri, and. Uh, <laughs> And uh, I was just like, that's worth the price of admission right there. Yeah, there's a scene right at the end where you're like, you see it. It's very like, reminiscent it. of the first film. It's like a, call, a throwback, and it was, it's a clever throwback. It doesn't, it, yeah, it turns, yeah. We, if you've seen it, you know what we're talking about, so yeah, yeah. I think. Yeah, but for me, I uh, love this movie a lot. There were a couple things that we talked about that we'll talk, we'll talk about with you that bothered me, the mm-hmm. certain scenes, and certain things that weren't fully closed, like closure as far as certain characters. But overall, I had a great time. I am giving this an 8.5 out of 10. I really loved it. There were so many clever things and, and good throwbacks to the original, good attention to detail within the story. Because I remember, guys, this Redcons from like after mm-hmm. Halloween, the original, and this then it. on. This, yeah. It's this one and the original. That's yeah. it. And as far as the story arc goes. And even even some of like the like the credits are built so that they actually are more similar to the original than any other one. Yes. So when you watch this like back to back, maybe next Halloween you'll have them both on DVD and you have a double feature. Yeah. One and then the other, it kind of works in that way. Partially it really does. The credits yeah. kind of just like yeah. But. Yeah, and that's great. And then uh, the person uh, Nick Castle plays Michael Myers, and there's another guy who plays it. They both did a great job, um, really bringing back. What I loved about this movie the most is that it finally made Michael Myers or the shape scary again. <laughs> Like, after the first one, even the, even the, the first, second one, I guess we're how we talk about it, but after that, it just, it, it, it he wasn't scared anymore. He, he wasn't that, that boogeyman that keeps, you know, appearing and disappearing or, you know, coming after you and doesn't stop. Like, he, there, he's, he, they made him scared again, and that, and re- really, I appreciate it. And you got a hand to Dave Gordon Green for creating the atmosphere and tension building mm. for, for the kill spot, for the, the moments when he kills. It builds such great tension in the, in the use of camera work. A lot of one shots that he does are kind of reminiscent of the first one to do pay homage to it. Does a great job there as well. Now there were a couple scenes in there. There's a scene. Uh, I'll, you know, I'll get some of the negatives, but I'll go, I'll go back to some of the positives. I will say the there's a scene with two cops <laughs> that were. It was completely pointless. Uh, it was. Yeah, it, it, they try to make it a little comedic spot for like relief because when this movie starts, it starts and it doesn't let up, and I li- that's what I like too. But there's like the scene like it gave you some relief, but I feel like it could have been completely axed from the film mm. and been fine. Um, certain other closure, certain characters. There was a, there's a, the twist that people are talking about. Huh. If you don't know what it is, and I don't want to tell you what it is, the, the twist. It, right? Everyone says. At the first twist. you're like, at first you're like, okay, I can get with this sort of because it's very intriguing. But then once certain things occur, you're just like... It plays out very dumb. It plays out very dumb, and you're just like, what was the point then? If it ha- it's it not, can happen so quickly. Yeah, and it's not really like a... Don't, don't be expecting like Michael Myers is really Laurie Strode or anything like that. It's, <laughs> yeah, not, no. a, it's not a big no, twist. No. And, they, and ultimately, it doesn't really even affect the and, movie that much. Like, it, it's like I said, the, the, it makes the sense... This, okay, the twist mm-hmm. makes sense, but the payoff was... It fell off very, a cliff. Yeah. It, like, the, the twist I, could, I got with, I was like, okay, this is interesting. This is different. And... Um, you know, even though there's a certain character that gets built up in that scene and mm-hmm. things happen. We were afraid it was going to go a different direction. We're like, yeah, oh, we were like, this is going to go really bad. It <laughs> could go really bad, bad, but then it, it you know. It anyway, got back on track. It did. But those are the only things that really bothered me. Everything yeah. else I absolutely I, loved with this movie. I really wanted, like, because you were talking about the tension. And the tension that you were talking about is between, um, is, is, is in the scenes where Michael is, is stalking the characters we know are going to die. Like, there's, there's characters we know are just the random throwaway teenage friends who are mm-hmm. doomed. Uh, one of whom we even see get it in the trailer. Yeah. Um, and it's like, uh, like, oh, I'm, I'm just like, mm, wait, okay, there's a plot to this movie, right? There's a story, he's got to go fight Laurie Strode. And I actually thought about, like, when we were driving back and all this sort of stuff about how if you cut out a lot of that stuff, just a lot of the general slasher filler, which really isn't even necessary. I'm not even sure why Michael's doing it. Of course, who knows why he's doing what he's yeah, doing. That, that, that's, that's, that's another one thing that uh, you yeah. like was... Uh, there's some moments in the film where he doesn't take the opportunity to kill, and you have to really are left wondering 
What's his motive? What's his motive? Like, there's opportunities where he has an opportunity to kill certain people, and he doesn't. Yeah. But then, like, he kills certain people, and you're just like, you, it, for me, I love that about mm. Michael Myers, or the shape, is you don't know why he's doing what he's doing. It's such an anomaly. Yeah, it, but it's, it's just, like, the moments of tension, a lot of those were just, okay, he's going to kill this freaking teenager. Can we, can we, so, if you cut out a lot of that, it'd be kind of a short movie. It would basically be like, Michael Myers breaks out, they let him know he's breaking out, he comes for Laurie Strode. And they have their thing, um, but it's it be straight to the point. A lot mm -hmm. of the rest of that is just filler. But I did remember one thing I really liked about this movie, and that is, um, again, I said I liked the first 40, 40 minutes. And you said it makes Michael Myers scary again. What I really like is that the, all the scenes where Michael Myers does not have his, before he gets his mask back on, mm -hmm. um, because he is the shape. He is this terror. Mm -hmm. Because the idea behind the mask is sort of, my hair's a little wonky. That's yeah, okay. Um, the idea behind the mask is that he, he's emotionless, he's faceless, he's soulless, he's just a, he's just a pure evil killing machine, right? He's, that he's the shape. Um, but he is a man under there. I mean, if, if nothing else, he has a human form. And you have to think about this from the perspective of the characters in the movie, which is not that he's a movie monster, but that he's a serial killer who is in an insane asylum. He does eat mm -hmm. meals, he does pee and poop. I mean, he, I mean, you know, so there is that aspect to him. Mm -hmm. And if they were to just show his face throughout this movie... That would completely ruin the effect. Mm -hmm. um, but they go like this great middle ground where there's this whole part of the movie where you see parts of him. You see his like balding head. He's 61 years old in this movie now. Mm -hmm. You see that he has a beard. You see certain parts of his face. And the and they never show it. They keep cutting around his face in all the scenes where he breaks out. And he's not dressed in his trademark black suit. He's still in like the white gown. And he's still harming people, right? And you're just reminded this is a guy named Michael. And you're like, Michael Myers doesn't have a beard. Well, guess he, well, how do you know he's wearing a mask? You think of that thing as his face, but I mean, that was really, to me, like, yeah. kind of scary because the, he is still a human man in a world that perceives him as a man, but then there's this, that, then there's just the, the other side that, where he is just a blatant, just a shape. Mm -hmm. And that, and this kind of showed you that he, there was, there was a, there, and then there, even later on in the movie, his mask comes off and we see more of him in that way. And so, and then I really liked that. And I really liked him getting his mask back. Like, yeah. he's like, this is mine. But, you know? That was an iconic. That, that was a great iconic scene. That was a great scene. Me. And well filmed. Really Very well, well filmed. filmed. Like, and for me, overall, yeah, sorry, go ahead. No, that's it. That's... Yeah, the, overall for me, this this is David Warren Green's, like, how it's filmed is the best part. Mm -hmm. And the score, we can't forget the score <laughs> is incredible. Not John just Carpenter, the John Carpenter thing that's already existed but no the, but there's the, other yeah, stuff that they add to it is really great mm -hmm. and and one last thing before we you know uh, wrap it up here is if anybody's wondering if the conflict between laurie strode and the shape or michael myers pays off oh hell yes <laughs> it does it's pretty fucking awesome i'll just say that and it, it's a very interesting the like interesting conflict that i won't i want to spoil because the the idea behind it and the essence behind what's going on between them two actually really evolves into something more than what you would expect mm -hmm. so yeah. but um, if you can't so can even though you gave a six out of ten can you still recommend people go yeah. to the theater might, and pay for it it might be like 6.5 maybe i mean yeah. it's i mean yeah i mean if you're a, if you're a fan i mean if you're if you're like my mother who saw the original when she was a 20 year old girl living with two other girls like and <laughs> she's tear the life terrified the life out of her and she says she will not go anywhere near this movie um, then don't go see it if you're not, you know, and if, and if you're not like a super horror movie fan, but you, you know, don't mind seeing the occasional person get stabbed through the throat, you know, it's still, <laughs> it'll be entertaining and it'll, you know, at the very least. So yeah, yeah I would, is... I would say check it out. It's well worth the money. It's Halloween time. It is, <laughs> it is October. You will get a lot of enjoyment out of this film. We guarantee it. Yeah. All right, folks, that is for today. Thank you very much for watching. What did you think of Halloween 2018? Leave your comments section below. Let us know whether you liked it or not. And give us your positive negatives and your score out of 10 without spoiling anything, please. Also, if you like what you watched, hit that like button. Subscribe to our channel so you can receive more of our various content in the future. Also, like us on Facebook, Twitter, and Stardust. The links are in the description below. And that's all we have for today. I'm Josh Williams. And I'm Ryan Murphy. And thank you for keeping it real. With Real Time.